Welcome back. Oh, wait. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another... You, you, you did it. You caught me again. Uh, I was... I was blissfully uh, toiling away and thought, you know what? Part of me keeps saying it's all content. And what are we doing today? Uh, we're, we're, we're dropping the patina on two creeps. So this is how far I got before I said, you've done a patina video before. Let's, let's just, let's just do it again. And why do one when you can do two? Uh, this is, it came from the workbench 19. And this is the other one. I never get it right. It's 16 or 17. This is the Kleimenstein UGRC. And this is the one that we built from nothing. This guy is going to be this color. And this guy is going to be mostly this color. So we've got, we've got our paints. Always need black. This one is well used. Uh, we need, there's our base silver inside and out. And then there is our rust. Cause we're going to go, we're going to go full patinas on both of these. We're going to do the sand downs, uh, to get to where we are right now. This is the mask sheet that comes with a creep. It is made out of something very akin to, I mean, it is in my mind. It is, it is like their version of Kamoi tape, which is good, but it's a little papery. And what will happen is that when you do this, there's a chance that you're going to lift the edges. So I take these and I scan them into the computer and I cut them out on my good friend, the cricket, and I have more and I can't find them. So he, I, I cut them out on the cricket. These are, this is sheets for Phoenix. So this is just regular Oracal 651 intermediate cal, which is permanent vinyl. If I thought long enough and hard enough about it, I would buy Aura Film, like the stuff designed to do window masks. But because this vinyl isn't even going to be on here for a couple of hours, it's it's not a problem. Like, you leave this on here for like a week, it's going to be really difficult to get it off because this is like seven-year signed vinyl. And uh, once once it's adhesive, like, properly sets in, it is set in. So if you do not have access to a Cricut, Cameo, Silhouette, any of those objects that you can, you can, I mean, it's easy to do, my friends. Uh, you use the power of Inception, and you convince yourself, your wife, your partner, your significant other, what they really need is a, a home vinyl plotting machine for all the projects that they can do with it. And then you use it to do things like cut masks and cut window masks and cut vinyl and you can make stickers out of it and you can cut templates out, which is something that I have not embraced enough, but honestly I should because you can, you can design like a shock tower template, cut it out of vinyl, Stick it on the metal. Just do it the rest of the way. What are you going to need? If you're patining, you're going to need a body. And there is no body that I recommend more highly than the J-Concepts Creep. Uh, as of the posting of this video, still on sale and aiming for 20 bucks. A $20 crawler body. Someone in the comments said, build something other than another Creep Truggy. And I'm like, brother, that's 40 bucks to outfit two rigs. The, the one drawback being that it's sometimes it's a little hard to get the battery up here in the front, but they just look good. They look good. And if this is your first time patinaing, if this is your first time painting a body, whether you, even if you decide not to do a patina and you're just going to do a regular body, if this is your first time doing it, I can understand that painting a Phoenix or a Traxxas Blazer or something could be a little bit daunting, you know. Once once you're into once you're up over that hundred dollars for a body, yeah, you're you're a little more willing to get adventurous on something that costs twenty dollars. And also, when you spend twenty dollars on the body, you can put the rest of those funds towards things like these are these are actual auto body, so they're not actually like Scotch brand brand Scotch brights. 
This is a medium abrasive, what whatever they call it. You can get them at auto parts stores. They work the best because this is the level of scuff that we're looking for. We want it just very lightly opaque inside and out. And because if you're doing a non-patina, if you're doing a, a proper paint job, you want to you wanna get to the point where you have no gloss left. There should be no, nothing shiny. Everything should be matted out. Now with a patina, because we are going to paint both bodies full silver inside and out, because that's our, that's our scratch coat and it's our base. Using the vinyl and fabric, you can use Tamiya, anything that is, that, that is suitable for polycarbonate. I prefer the vinyl and fabric over everything else because even in, even in this economy, uh, it is still inexpensive. This is about, I think they're $13 a can now, $12.99, but for 11 ounces. Compare that to like this Tamiya PS16 was $7 for 100 mils, so three ounces. This is uh, three times that amount. It's, doesn't that look like more than three times? Anyway, I guess that's how circles work. So I will use Tamiya because the limitation of vinyl and fabric, I've mentioned it before in comments, I believe I mentioned it in the in the video before, the primary drawback being that this is intended to to, to, to repaint dashboards, door panels, center consoles, trim, and seats. And it works great on that. I painted an old pair of Honda seats black, paint, repainted them black, and they came out fantastic. Uh, the, 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 the limitation is that your colors, like it comes in basically the colors of the interior of a car. Back in the days, and I haven't been able to find them since, they used to make like fire engine red, and they made like a proper like lemon yellow. I have not seen those in recent times. You're pretty much limited to silver, uh, black. They do make clear, and I'll, I'll talk to why, why why clear is useful. But uh, yeah, charcoal gray, two different colors of tan. Basically, the interiors of cars, I'm, I'm assuming there are not a lot of yellow car interiors now, and uh, people are probably not painting them. There are other manufacturers that make this paint. Sem is another one that makes them. Uh, I was just talking to someone from Europe and uh, honestly, I'm not a hundred percent sure what you guys have over there in vinyl and fabric, but I, I, and I'm not sure about this either, but I'm pretty confident that your, uh, your little tiny cans of Tamiya are probably even more expensive for you guys than they are for us. So if you don't, I said, if you don't, I got halfway through a thought. If you don't have a cricket to duplicate the masks, because these already have masks applied inside and out, because obviously we're painting both sides. If you don't have a cricket to do this, you can either copy them. And the easiest way to do that is after you peel these off, uh, just put the Kamoi tape on and then just cut along the line. And then you'll have cut it out of the backside. Or, well, you put the Kamoi tape on this side and cut it through the back side is what I meant to say. Or you can just cut them in place. I tend to try to minimize scoring on bodies. And then, of course, we've got our good friend, paper towels or whatever you enjoy. I like paper towels because they're a little bit lower length than, than shop towels. And then we give it a, uh, a cursory wipe down with denatured alcohol. Rubbing alcohol will work. Denatured alcohol is better. And it doesn't have to be perfect by any means because this is a patina. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no way to do a patina wrong. You can always sand some paint off or put more paint on. It's the perfect use of a $20 body. It's the perfect use of paint that you can buy at your auto parts stores. And we just happened to have both cans of this because we were at the auto parts store. In truth, to do a patina, you need a single can of the paint that is dedicated for vinyl and fabric, because this will be your base coat. This is effectively our primer, and this will act as the bonding layer for all the other paints, because above the silver will go just regular, this is Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer, which has this red oxide color, which when sanded through paint, 
in my estimation, looks as close enough to rust as possible. We touch it up outside with washes and whatnot, depending on how far we go into it. And then the other body is just regular old Rust-Oleum Gloss Orange. Not even the fast, dry stuff. I was hoping that I had a can of Krylon because if you use this stuff from Krylon, the Fusion All-in-One, you might think, oh, All-in-One Pin Plus Primer. This won't work directly on Lexan. It will chat, it will crack and chip and it will peel. But it does work great as a coat over this. I've used both of these colors in the past. This is Jake's base color. Uh, just be aware, when this dries, and it dries very fast, in like five minutes, it goes on, it dries so hard that sanding it is actually difficult. Like I have no chips on any bodies that have been pinned with this. It only scrapes off uh, over use, you know, it, it seasons in the patina. But it, it, uh, it, is, it, it, is, it is really tough stuff. This stuff does not dry as fast, but if left to dry w works just as well, you're just gonna spend more time. Like uh, this is probably a two day jobby to get them all done because I don't like to rush my coats. We might even spice it up a little. I forgot that in the cabinet we've got metallic rust, which does make a so we might we might do a little we might do a little a little double action there. I don't have uh, any other orange, and this is the yeah. A lot more time and cooler time. It dries to touch in two to four hours on the rust oleum. Draw back there. Uh, yeah, dries to the touch in twenty minutes. And on a day like today, where we are going to get up to a temperature point where I am going to have to stop painting at some point this afternoon because it is going to get so hot that what happens is when the aerosol exits the can, before it can make it from the can to the surface that you're trying to apply it to, it will try to dry. Uh, that's why they have those application temperature windows. And being here in the desert, I've gotten to experience both sides. We're trying to paint too cool and too hot too cool you can get away with you put your can in a, in a in a bucket of warm water and it'll warm up the paint make sure it's shaken really well and you're good uh, you can warm up your body with a hair dryer to help with the adhesion on a day like today there's nothing you can really do about too hot uh, it's going to make the paint i don't want I, I, maybe the word is aerosolize it basically turns the paint into dust so we are going to try to get most of the coats down before we get to a temperature where the paint turns to dust. And then what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pick these up. And when I set them back down, they'll be silver. So I'm going to pick these up. I don't know if I can adequately emphasize just how quickly Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric dries. But it dries really fast. And also, we're not worried about full opacity see that that was i was trying to figure out how am i going to show that we haven't gone that we're more translucent than we are opaque because when you look at it like this you obviously cannot see through it there's there's no points you can see through it now if it's backlit if we can get a point of backlighting yeah you can see through it because it's basically two oh we can i can just see my, there we are it looks like a shadow weird uh, it's two soft coats on the inside, two soft coats on the outside. Speaking of inside and outside, something that I'm sure I neglected to remember. When you put your double masks on, unless you're a masochist, put, oh, I got, that's a little thin right there, but it doesn't matter. Put your inner masks on first. Mask the inside, then mask the outside, because you want to try to mostly get them to line up. It's not critical that they're completely aligned. But the better they're lined up, the easier it will be for you. Two coats of, and you can, can you tell that we got some ghost ride here? Like we've, we've already got a little real patina, not fake patina, but real patina. Uh, now we do rust. And the beauty of it is, A, you don't have to do a full coat. And B, it only has to go on the outside. These are still very, uh, damp and very sparkly but uh i mean dry enough to the touch 
I don't focus as so much on rust down here at the bottom edges. Uh, uh, like I'm not going to the point of like roughing up the panels to make it look more authentic. And then I dusted over them with a little bit of silver. Just a little silver flake over the top. Yeah, it's pretty much set. A lot of that is going to come off. I did use a combination of the Krylon Metallic Rust and the just regular Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. I, th I feel like I got them pretty uniform. Uh, it's starting to get kind of hard to tell them apart. I just have to remember, well, this guy is 19 and this guy's the other one. He's the, he's the rocky one, which is very difficult to paint because his bottom is coved like that. This guy just basically the cutout in the back and no other trimming. There we are uh, for the rust. Now we do, I, I haven't gathered this stuff. I gotta get my, I gotta get my water and my salt. In the, in the grander scheme of things, what do we have? Water. What are we out of? Salt. So uh, we're gonna pepper this boy. That's, that's a Coxco amount of pepper. That's a lot of pepper. This is one of those continuous spray spray bottles it is not uh explicitly necessary but so when you so it also makes a really fine mist it's about that's probably and yeah honestly that's probably all we need we're just gonna make a mess that i'm probably gonna have to address with a vacuum ah. it's heavier than anticipated Oh yeah, that's, you know what? You know what? Pepper, pepper, pepper might be the key. I go, I go for, for, for where points, like where I think, where I think paint is going to wear off. And we don't want to go, we don't want to go too peppery because the pepper is going to, is going to stop paint from adhering to anywhere where there's pepper. Theoretically, I've never used pepper before. I've tried sugar, I've tried salt, I've tried salt grinder. The salt grinder, here's the problem, because it's not granulated salt, it's ground salt. It's either, it's one of two things. It's either too coarse or too fine because when it grinds it fine, it grinds it, it looks like snow. And uh, this, this is more, this is definitely, I think pepper might be the way to go because it's uniform, but it's not too uniform. I got a little more on one side of the hood than the other. But this is the beauty of, of, of the patina is like, that's, that's fine. I don't let the paint dry fully in between. I probably actually want a little... I'm making such a... Like, I'm going to have to take a shot back to this. I, I would generally... I would ordinarily try not to pepper up my workspace quite this much. I would do this outside. This this is the cost of of content creation, I guess. We get a little peppery. All right. Uh, ooh, now I have to remember. Uh, narrow body holes uh, gets turned burgundy, and wide body holes gets turned orange. Not unsurprisingly, at all. The uh, the vinyl and fabric burgundy went on like as as well as I could have hoped that's that's perfect I don't want that a hundred percent full coverage because we're gonna have to sand through most of it anyway uh, it definitely helps if your sandpaper is used it doesn't but you know and uh, if your water that you're using is filthy and has chunks of metal floating in it that just adds to the authenticity and then we we get into it you might ask you might you might be saying to yourself where is, uh, where's the orange one? Well, the orange one is on its fourth coat. And when the first coat went on, it looked like, I don't know, old copper, maybe. It certainly didn't look like orange. So what we're going to do, this is, this is the knockdown, uh, we're, we're, we're going purely by feel. And when you're using dirty sandpaper and dirty water, uh, your runoff is 
like it's not red it's black I've sanded a lot of steel and aluminum with this piece of 400 but it was convenient and it was there and I don't at, at this stage for sure I don't worry about stroke direction we're, we're just we're, we're actually trying to remove a little bit of material now we're trying to get all the pepa off I'm liking the pepper so far and some lightly used 400 grit is also not too aggressively going through the color coat let's see yeah that's starting to come up nice and smooth oh i still got this guy here boy that really keeps spraying Yeah, that's that's an excellent start. We're we're definitely on to it. But I get to do, you know, we could we could leave this running for a while. This is again, we're we're gonna go, we're gonna we're gonna touch again on why the creep is so good. Because this is not this is not something that I recommend you do in one sitting. Like you do this on the side. You're working on something else. Uh, the radio's going. You got some Nero playing. Uh, when a couple... Oh, yeah. A couple songs go by, you think to yourself, Oh, right. Go put on another coat of paint. This was two coats of the burgundy over top. And like I say, I'm trying to use minimal pressure because I don't want to take too much color off at this point now the way natural rust works boy that is peppery the salt breaks down in water the pepper does not so the way rust works you're gonna get points where try as you might you're gonna sand more off there i think i think i think we're gonna get pretty good here because I'm not even through the pepper in most spots, certainly not on the hood. So this is something that I don't do in one sitting. Now what I will do in, in this sitting is I will get all the pepper off and I will make sure that the body is smooth-ish to the touch. Uh, some bodies can get away with a bit more final texture. Uh, what paint you choose is really going to lean into how the patina works in over time. How much you sand here is is not as, as critical. And I will say, ordinarily, for the non-filming version of this, uh, I don't use a little bowl full of filthy water. I use a five-gallon bucket full of filthy water. And I have my towel here specifically for this purpose, and I'll sand, and I just straight dunk. Whole body goes in, comes out, and it really helps with the wet sanding because you don't have to, uh, you don't have to keep re-wetting the sandpaper. We keep the body wet. And this is where, right in here, I'm, almost, I'm using almost no pressure. This is where the pre-patina, pre-patina will be determined entirely by how much ghost riding your rig did before it was painted. Like you, you can't, you can't fake, you can't fake some of this stuff. It, 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 that, <laughs> that, that's crinkles from this thing getting rolled a bunch of times. Once we're sanded all the way through, we, we will make a snap judgment as to whether or not we think the relative amount of uh, under rust is where we want it to be. Because we, we have the opportunity and we will do over rust. And then you can, you can clear it in most anything. Uh, Duplicolor does make a clear vinyl and fabric. It is not super matte. Now, if you're not 
specifically chasing super matte, then it is what I would recommend. Big tall can. The Traxxas Pro Graphics Matte Clear. Uh, I've left it on the sun. I've shaken it for extremely extended periods of time. Uh, the couple times that I've tried to use it, it, it comes out splotchy. And I don't like the unevenness because have I my way, I don't sand once the clear is on. The clear should be it. It's just the final to keep everything in place because when we get ahead to doing uh, washes, rust wash and black wash, and getting some mud and wear and stuff like that on it. Uh, that's all like acrylics and water-based. So if you don't, well, I mean, you know, it, it, it is a patina. You can just, you can let it wear off. But I wanted, I wanted most of the wear down here, down this center stripe on the hood. I'm still working my way through pepper, I feel like. Yeah, it's starting to get there. And yeah, pepper is definitely more gross. Than working with the salt. Uh, the salt dissolves, but I find that the salt, I'm, I'm preferring the pepper to the salt. Removal of the pepper is a little more intensive, but I think the, the modeling pattern of, you know, fake rust, I think it's coming through better with the pepper. I definitely got heavier on that on the top ridge of the hood, which is good because it's going to get hit with sandpaper more than anything else. And I used to, I used to get the Kamoi tape out and I would, I would mask off this little section right here so that it would be silver before I did all the painting. And then I realized just take a decal and cut a decal to fit so that there's like a little grate or a grill there. That's that's all that really need be done. So, uh, we're, we're not going to go all the way through this. I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to hand rub some of the pepper off, but some of it's really under the paint. This is, you know, I'll do 20 30 minutes because oh that that, that roof feels really nice though. Because we're working we're working slowly much like woodworking, you can't sand back on. So if you sand too far, I mean, oh God, it looks gross though. If you sand too far, it's all fixable. You can just put more paint on it. But my inner laziness uh, rears its head and is like, well, just spend a little bit of extra time because it's not like this is not backbreaking labor. So spend a little extra time on this on the initial touch sand to get the high points down and then maybe you won't have to put more paint on more more rattle can paint when we get into acrylics and doing the washes and stuff with the brush to me that's the fun part that takes me back to middle school early high school building armor models and painting them and weathering them and you know building sandbags and doing all that stuff this this brings back that feel and i don't i don't like painting bodies i've mentioned it you always feel like there's the specter looming that you're gonna that you're gonna ruin something and if you're trying to get that pro grade finish i mean the the truth of it is that there was a there's a very good chance that you're gonna ruin something when we're burning through and getting to the silver underneath that's fine that's where we want to be. Yeah, look how thin I got the paint right here on the back. That's nice. And like I say, we will touch it up. We're going to get all the way through. Yeah, the, the sides are going to be really nice. More water. More water is better. This is not optimal. The orange guy is probably going to have five coats by the time he's done. So he will just appear in frame with his pepper sanded because it's going to take it's the same exact process but it's going to take a long time because we've got that much more paint to sand through just trying to get to the color this was one coat one mist coat and then one top coat and that was it 
but this stuff is this stuff is pretty tough yeah these bottles are great and we are we are mostly through i think we've got the the certainly the lion's share of the pepper has been removed And I'm, 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 I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out because what I have learned is there's no wrong way to do this. Uh, some, some patinas, I come at them and I attack them with a more is more philosophy. And some of them I hit with a less is more philosophy. And I, and I kind of go by what the color is telling me. And I feel like this burgundy boy here, I feel like this thing is leaning towards more of the, is leaning heavily towards less is more. So we're, we are gonna do less in the way of initial abrasion. And we're gonna let this guy patina in a little more naturally. I'm gonna work more to get those highlights a popping. And I'm not super chuffed with this kind of blistering out at the base. Some of those spots of missing paint are a little big. We'll see what we can do about that. And actually, generally when I get to about here, when the pepper is knocked down and we're getting ready to do the rest, I will set this thing outside. We'll wipe it down as best as we can. Once dry, we will make sure that as much of the pepper or salt or whatever uh, get in the way you choose. We'll ensure that most of it is off. This guy's looking, this guy's looking okay. And then we will do the black coat on the inside. We'll do the overall black. That way, because what's going to happen, ugh, what's going to happen is when we're starting to do the other stuff, there's going to be a lot of runoff. It's all water-based. There's going to be a lot of runoff. It's going to get up on the inside and it looks like this. So it's better to just do the black so once, once that layer is off and it's smoothed down, honestly, the way this is, like I'm, I'm more about the subtlety on this one. Sanding, it's, oh, I see a little, you can see a little texture right there. This sanding on this particular body is probably 90% done. Like I feel pretty good about how this is coming out. So I'm not, I'm not mad about this at all. Now, what I will do is I will look into the grill stickers, which I would grab if I thought I knew where they, there we are. So the grill sticker for the creep, we will use this. What I always ensure to do is the part with the skull, I cut straight across this line and off so that the grill only comes up just below here. And we can, we can probably peel it a little so you can see, there you go. It's like see-through. So you have a choice. You can either Think ahead and mask this off so that this stays silver. You could paint it silver now, or you could do what I do, which is I just put mask around like this. And when I paint this black, I just paint that black as well. I'd rather have the grill darked out because these parts are basically whited out. Like you can see, you can't, you can't see through them. So we're working a little bit in that, in that negative space. Like when you look at it this way, it's, it's weird how it reverses. Like you actually see through this part. That looks like the silver part. So I get the grill a little darker. Uh, another option, you can back on the inside with like a charcoal or a gunmetal instead of just going straight black. This guy will go straight black. I have a couple more coats to put on the guy outside. And the next time you see this guy, he will at least be... And he'll have his black inner coating, which is what will stop any light from going through. We're pretty opaque now, but he'll be fully opaque once he has the black coat on the inside. And then we'll be ready for the, like, you know, t the, the last 10% takes 90% of the time. That is 100% true here as well. As promised, uh, it is indeed, uh, this gentleman is blacked out on the inside. There you go. And, and, uh, we, uh, okay, we're, we're, I'm, I'm going to try to structure these thoughts. This is the problem when a video isn't just made one, one cut straight through. I forget a lot of stuff. 
here, here, so here's the stuff that should have been mentioned in the first five minutes. You're going to want a good pair of scissors. I mean, you're going to want a pair of Lexan scissors because there's going to be trimming no matter what. So you're going to want a pair of Lexan scissors. Uh, the Amazon ones are not so great. Uh, the Dubro ones are good. And it is my guesstimate that the, the factory team ones from Associated, these are just the Dubros. I lost my Dubros in a fire, but uh, like this went through the same fire. But uh, the Reamer, the, I've been using, I might go so far as to say every body hole I've ever drilled in a body has been done with this fire melted Dubro Reamer. It just works that good. Dubro sells a little combo that is the scissors and the, and the, and they're not even that expensive, the scissors and the Reamer. And it is a, it isn't even buy once, cry once because it's under $20 for both. And you, and you will probably you will quite most likely never need another one ever again. So a good pair of Lexan scissors. I like these little Fiskers, these little short boys for cutting out decals, for doing real delicate trim work on bodies. Because like, even if a decal sheet, and we've got a tale to tell about these, even if a decal sheet comes pre-cut, like look how much space they give you on most of the stuff. The flags are okay, these are okay, the headlights are okay. But like the grill had a big, well, I have to cut it anyway. So I cut the rest around the grill. So when I put the grill in place, like I, it, 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 we go for simplicity here. On both of these bodies, and you'll see the other one in a moment, I definitely embraced less is more. And I got into, I did more trimming after it was painted. Uh, I spent some time this morning remaking the rear body mounts. I just made those out of Delrin so that it wasn't some hack bodge of other stuff. I trimmed the front down. The front used to actually come down over this cut brace a little. And part of me was like, well, I mean, you can cove out the brace a little. No, we'll just cut a little tiny bit of Lexan off. Like this used to drop down, like how far that is straight across. So I cut it's about seven millimeters off of the front and it just genuinely makes the body just that it goes on in a second and with this mounting on a creep i call these two post options it has four posts but you'll pin the hood and then once the hood is pinned th this can't come off i leave about eight millimeters of projection out of the back which is about what a typical body post will do seven to eight millimeters through the body and then to take it off it just it just pops off that's that's why i love these bodies so much so when you're when you're prepping a body and particularly one like this, they are twenty dollars and the the cab back is fairly thin. So I approach that with two objects. I approach that with gorilla tape. Everyone should have a roll of gorilla tape in their house. It sticks to pretty much anything, and are good to pop sticky back foam. Okay, if it's a vertical body hole like this, gorilla tape. If it's a flat hole like this, use sticky back foam. Now. These body posts are O-ringed in the front. It doesn't have room for the foam. But the other one, the other one does. So that's how sticky back foam. And then this guy just has two pieces. This guy has got a full bridge, which will, that, that's all you need. Just, just that little amount is enough to hold it. And it like, when, when you do a rough landing like this, you can see it wants to try to rip those out. And like I say, when you get down here near the bottom, it gets pretty thin. And because we're working with bodies that are so small, we're not adding anything in the way of weight by putting a, uh, a strip of Gorilla Tape on it. So that's, that's how that guy sits. And absolutely no pun intended, I, I feel like I painted myself into a corner. This particular uh, can of gloss orange, I found in a different can of gloss orange, right? And it was the 10 minute kind, not the two hour kind. And I'm super impatient. So I went with the 10 minute kind because orange needs a lot to cover. So this guy was five coats and the 10 minute Krylon was pumpkin orange and I will be the uncle of a monkey if that is not the exact color of a pumpkin it looks like pumpkin pie 
So when they said pumpkin orange, they really meant pumpkin orange. This is not the same orange that I used on Hardline. That was a, I believe that orange was called, I mixed spiced amber and I mixed the Husqvarna orange together, the last of my Husqvarna orange together to make, so, so his colors can never be reproduced. This is just Krylon gloss pumpkin orange out of a can. And let me tell you the differences between using vinyl and fabric burgundy, which, like I said, it was a dust coat and a color coat, and it came out phenomenally. And I basically did no further sanding. I got it to here and was like, you know what? I, I, I love the way that looks. We'll, we'll do a little weathering stuff on it, but that guy, that guy's done. Then I got his fitment. I put his tapes on trimmed a little he's good to go this guy on the other hand so dust coat and a final coat this was five full coats and whereas that guy was touch sanding with 400 grit this guy was full blast elbow grease with 220 and even getting through the orange to the silver was difficult so these spots have burned through I, I didn't try to do any of these. This is this is just how it came to be. Then I did it in his black. I put his tapes in. Uh, he didn't have... Uh, I think I trimmed him. You know, he's got like a little, a little smile across the front. The decal came up just shy of the bottom of the of the where the body was ending. So I just I just trimmed it up. And I, I mean I like that. Like I like that look. We, we make a lot of choices purely based on the cosmetics of it, particularly when it comes to a body. So there is a part of me that is like, grab the detail pen, you know, uh, pull the masks, or actually, you know what? I, there's a part of me that is just like, shoot them with the mat, pull the masks, do the pen lines around the windows for the deep for a little bit of detail and and call it a day but then the other part of me is like once that mat goes on i mean you can you can keep adding to the patina you can put mat down I, i've done a couple bodies where it was layer on upon layer upon layer upon layer and those do real, work really well because the more of those layers you keep building up, when it does get scratched through and start to develop real patina, uh, the more layers you have, the more real it's going to look, or the better it's going to look. I don't know about realism, the better it's going to look. Take, for instance, Daphne, who has started to kind of turn all American, as she was silver on the inside, silver under the blue, and then underneath the rust coat, we did a layer of, I think it was called Heritage White. So it went, so she doesn't have silver on the outside. She goes silver, then blue on the inside. Then on the outside, it was Heritage White, then the rust with salt, and then the top coat of the, it was Tamiya, one of the Tamiya blues. And like this stuff is great. Like it came out so good. And I mean, I really like how in her patina, all that white is showing through. She's got a lot of weathering up in the front. But I mean, this this is the real patina. Can, can you tell where she hits? Does she hit here and here? So some of the stuff you can't, you can't fake, like it, it's only gonna come from time and driving. And I mean, look at the, look how pristine the inside is. Uh, she's got T-Rex tape on her back. But that's that's the goal with all of these, for me at least. So let's let's kill a few minutes here. Like, like I say, this guy right here, I am happy enough with this that I could put the mat over it to make it uniform, peel the masks off, and, and call it a day. I'm not a big decal guy. Uh, at most, I might like put something in the back window or something. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a big decal guy. I don't, unless we're going to go all out and it's a body that's just completely covered in decals like Eddie or something. Uh, most of the bodies in here, like, I don't think Zoidberg has a single decal. I don't think the ghost Rover has a decal. I don't think Argentum has a decal. 
Daphne has none. Uh, hers are painted. Uh, the grill. It, she has the. She has three, just like the guys. Three. I don't like the way the door handle stickers look. They 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 kind of they kill the illusion. They don't they don't look real enough. So when we get into this, you don't need much. You can use whatever for the weathering on this. Uh, it, it's just like treating the plastic models we did as a kid. Uh, very helpful is the Tamiya Weathering Master, the one that comes with rust, gunmetal, and silver. Those are the three colors we need. I use them all. Uh, when 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 you get one, do yourself a favor and buy more of these these little guys. I, I bought a six pack of them, and then I promptly lose them, and I just use that one in all three colors. But we're weathering, so it doesn't really matter. And then for for washes, I go with folk art. I go with brown and licorice. These came in the big set of multi-surface paints. I find the multi-surface paints work better. Uh, you 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 water them up. You basically for doing a wash, you want a bigger paintbrush than I think what I probably have here. I've got I've got this guy that's been dyed purple. A bigger brush is better. But my biggest brush is full of soap because it's what I use to mount tires. So I got to get myself about a, about a one inch brush is generally where you want to be. And it, it's, it's about, it's about deposition. Like where, where is stuff going to naturally lay on a body? And I generally start with the acrylics and then move over to this stuff. We get the brush and we get the brush. We get the brush. And the beauty of this is it's just you put some on, you take some off. And and you can spend you can spend hours doing this stuff and this to me this 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 is where this is where it lives for me this is the fun of it and uh and as such is a uh, is sort of a difficult part to to include recording wise because i would have to let the camera run for hours uh, also if you have another fan brush, which I think I do. This one, this particular fan brush has been dyed green by whatever paint I used on it. What you can do is when you get it into the into the little, little spots, you can go back and you can you can dry brush it out. And the effect should be suitably subtle. This is acrylics, so they're gonna dry very quickly. But I can already see right here we're, we're getting more of what we want. And I don't bother. This is patina, man. This, this is the strength of this as an operation. You don't, you don't have to clean anything really. Like up the grill, I would generally, this is, this is going to be, that's already too dark. There we go. That's still a little too dark. But when it's too dark and you get a little run over, yeah, see? Happy accidents, everybody. So we'll go like that. We'll pull it out with a brush. And then before it dries, because it dries so fast, we are going to remove most of it. And that's, yeah, see, we're, we're going to dull it down. Yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. And we'll go, we'll go hood line like this. Dry brush it back. Because we only want to stay that, that little bit. And the hardest part of this is not leave, like th this shine is, is very, is, is jarring to me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little heavy on the color, not quite enough water, but that's the beauty of the paper towel. 
We just want to we want to kill that shine. And like I say, and have said. It, these acrylics dry so fast that we're just we're we're trying to apply very little. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. See the bright orange to me, even pumpkiny as it is, doesn't doesn't look how I want it to be. See now, like look at that that's way too that's way too much. Just minimize what would appear to your brain to be brush strokes. This is where the, the paper, oh, or swirls, really. So, so like you're evading a sandworm, uh, be erratic in your movements and your placement. And when we go over with that wash, like I don't mind that when I was doing this, here's some overspray from the black. I got, when I was in here, I got a little too much of an angle, but you know what? Again, that is certainly in the deep, in the happy accident realm, I'm not upset about that at all. I would also like to point out, if you do opt to go with regular acrylics, whether they be Apple Barrel, Craft Essentials, whatever is available in your locale, if you don't go with whatever brand's offering of something called multi-surface like designed to use on glass or whatever what i've noticed is that like okay like here's deco art americana this is just premium acrylic this is just regular acrylic paint uh the multi-surface stuff and then here we got we got craft essentials the the spread and the ability to put it down more uniformly is much better with the multi-surface. And like, this is a little dark to me. So it hasn't had time to set. So we can take that down a little bit. And now see, for me, I love this. And now the bat, it just looks so orange. So uniformly orange. A little of this, a little of this. Gonna have to get the roof as well. You, uh, you will find that uh, you're going to go through a number of paper towels. That's just, that's just how this stuff works. So this is, uh, we're mostly washing. This is a wash because it's wet. Uh, I, I might, I'm, later on, I might get into some dry brushing. Yeah, this, this multi-surface is going down perfect. This, this is, I don't know about anyone else. I can't speak for you, but this, this is exactly how I wanted this body to come out. And it will dull down all of the spots where silver has burned through from the sanding. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, like, see, we can't, we can't have that. Might actually dig in with a little brown a little right there. And then with the brown, we wipe a little less and we dab a little more. And it is not, there is there is no science to this. If you think it looks good, you know what? It probably does. You're going to paint up your hands real good. But it, like, like yeah, th this, this is the stuff I like. You got to pay more attention. And by you, I mean me. You got to pay more attention to... Uh, creases and edges. Dry brush that out a little bit, and then we'll get the we'll get the part that doesn't look right to us. Oh, got a little too much on there. But you know what? I'm okay with it. We've got a little uh, got a little guy on there. I just don't, what, what I don't want to see is brush strokes. It, it shouldn't, it, if nothing else, it shouldn't look like it was done with a brush. Ooh, let's hope that didn't dry too fast. No, that's okay. Yeah, this, this guy, this guy's giving me problems. But this, it, you know what? It's not just easy. It, it's fun. 
and then you can, uh, you know, you, you, you check your work. You go, how, how does that look to me? And then your brain will go, well, I'll tell you how it looks to me. It looks like you just made that brass rod, so you're going to have to put some brass black on that, my friends. And uh, that rear is uh, offensively clean and shiny. So we're, we're going to, we'll, we'll probably try a little bit of aluminum black on that as well. And I would be remiss if we didn't, if we didn't dig into why you love this stuff. And this, it, it is, it is subtlety. So you, you, you get it, you get it on your foamy. And I don't know how they get it to look so much like rust. But on an orange body, it is largely lost. So if you have spots where too much silver is uh, is breaking through, and I just use my finger for this stuff. Yeah, uh, if you want to get much more orangey, rusty patina, I would say from the start, from 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 my opinion, as a lunatic. Uh, blue, blue is the best color. If you want, if you want a, a a more rusty patina, if you want heavy rust wear. Yeah, it's like see that along the silver, that little gold, like, like, like the highlight, how the highlights pop. Oh, I love it. I tend to use the other side. We go into the silver, and then you can you can you can bring it back. Like if you, if you want a little bit of fresher. And uh, just, you know, you think, think about spots where wear is naturally going to occur. Oh, yeah. Not, 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 where, not precisely where I want to be. This is, this is more of the soft touch here. And then you just do this for a couple hours. You put some, you put some music on, you put on a podcast, you, you put yourself, you put yourself in a mindset of this isn't, this isn't work. This isn't a chore and it's not, uh, the, the gun metal is maybe the, the, the most, the dead, the deadliest weapon in, of the three, because you would think rust and you would think that, but, oh yeah. So we get another little wash over that and we get that like, get that nice wear to it. Yeah, that back window is looking really nice to me. And I guess, I, I guess my, my, my predilection towards this type of thing is why I don't do decals very much, why I don't go uh, heavy on the decals because like a lot, uh, decals are going to look a little odd let's say look a little odd i would like to get that a little more matte but then i have to remind myself we're going to spray over the whole thing in matte and it's going to end up matte this, this and you can see no basically no no washing there then you can make you can make some decisions like i like the i like the bitty design pen it's basically an alcohol based pen Like how how much how much line work are we gonna do? And the way I do the line work is you put that on and it looks terrible. It looks terrible. We would never grab a fresh paper towel. The alcohol that you use to clean the body when you started is like I said, alcohol based. Yeah. Maybe a little, maybe a little too understated. Also, the alcohol will allow you to really fine tune, like where the where the patina is. We can we can wear out to some lighter spots. It's a that I try try to convince me that doesn't look like metal. So good. Uh, I think the metal might be a little bright though. There we go. 
And the, and the, and the, and the, the most fun part about the whole process is that when you're done, 99.7% of people that see it will never know. They'll never know. But that's okay. Because the process is, is at least to me, and if you have any uh, uh, fragment of my fractured mentality, the process is fun. It really is. I don't like painting. And I love, I love doing these. This, to me, looks so much better than it did when it was just orange. And I'm glad that I, that I fought off that, that little inkling of laziness that was trying to override. It's still, now it just looks like a dirty pumpkin. But it's, it's still a pumpkin. Uh, I, I fought off that laziness desire that very much too bright here. Uh, <laughs> that was telling me, it's fine, dude. Just leave it. The brown will give you the ability to lessen that brightness, but not to the same aggressiveness that the black does. And I, I honestly, I think you, you don't even need, it's not a hundred percent requirement that you have the, the weathering master. I think if you have multi-surface black and multi-surface brown, it doesn't have to be the same, like what, whatever, what are the licorice and uh, dark brown? Any brown and any shade of black, the multi-surface pretty much comes inside and any of them will work. Uh, some gunmetal might help. You get, a, you get a little metallic in there because I think for me, it's, it's sp like I say, it's spots like that. Like I'll try to hit more around the windows and get more of that wear in. I'll fool around with the pen more. And when you, uh, when you get to see the final, the finished product is the first time that he gets to roll and scrape it up in the next episode that, that features this gentleman. When, whenever that might appear here on the channel, I am, I, uh, I've got two of these bodies to do this guy, uh, honestly, uh, probably like 75% done. Um, I'm, I'm still living by less is more. I want to get some more shadows and shading on it. Like there's some spots where the paint just burns straight through. And to me, it looks like there's a hole because we can see through the edge of the Lexan. So I'll address that hole, but oh man, I love how this, I love how this stuff is coming out. I think the washes are going great. This is going great. Uh, ordinarily, as soon as I turn on the camera, everything just go, uh, giant poop emoji, right? But uh, I think that looks fine. So, you know, that's up to you. If you think that is where you stop, then stop there. If you want to do more, then do more. That's the beauty of these. And, and, here in closing, we're going to close this one. We're going we're gonna to end this right here. This is how these look for now. You'll get to see them in their finished state at some point. Uh, the best part of this is, even if you get to this point and think, Oh God, I've ruined it. You can just repaint it. Put a piece of masking tape over the headlights. Paint it again. It's it's just oh yeah, and uh why why do we do creeps? Why do we love creeps? I can't I can't frame this up well enough, so in grams, the the, the item of the universe 80, 86. This body weighs eighty six grams complete, which is uh under three ounces. Two and three quarter is usually where these guys come out and, out, out and about. These guys have had a, a fair bit of trimming done on them. Oh, it's much easier to stand it up. This guy, because he has cut less, this, this guy's got a decent amount of trim. Now, even with that taken off, I mean, maybe a couple grams here. Uh, this guy's 93 grams. So just over three ounces. So this is, in parting, I would like to complain once again about people who cut bodies to ribbons. This body weighs three ounces. This, these two guys, and these two guys together weigh two pounds. Three ounces. 32 ounces, three ounces. Uh, what was it, 93 grams? Almost 1,000 grams. Don't, don't worry about it. Just mount your body a little bit higher. That's why Blue Sky High and guys like that that run relatively high shells, I'm not worried about it. We're talking 150 grams, 180 grams. 
on a rig whose total weight is, well, you know, and that's seven and a half pounds, so three and a half kilos, three and a quarter kilos, 3,300 grams, 3,500 grams. It's 2% of the vehicle's weight. Like, don't, don't worry about it. Make it look at least partly like a truck. And I say that as a, you know, as a guy who, uh, <laughs> who, uh, unabashedly keeps building truggies. They're fun. Uh, they're super capable. Um, I've run out of things to say and I'm hungry. So I uh, go, if you're hungry, go get something to eat. We're just going to pickle. We're just going to put these in here because after I eat something, I'm going to come right back to this. I will see you next time in the next one, whatever that might be. If I missed anything and I'm sure I did like, uh, for decals, try to use tweezers that way, uh, because your finger oils, you'll always be grabbing them by the corner. So when you go to peel them off the sheet, crease the sheet, push the corner like that, peel them off. Try not to get your meat hang, your meat hooks underneath the decal because that little bit of oil under, they're going to start to peel, even with a coating over the top. So try not, do your very, very best, not just to have a good one, but not to touch the decals from the backside. Uh, some folks would say, well, you could put surgical gloves on. I hate doing this in surgical gloves. There's a big part of this to me that is feel. That's still wet. Uh, so I, I like to get I like to get my hands nice and dirty. It's part of the process for me. Also, I mean, aside from guys who work exclusively in spray paint, artists don't really wear gloves. Let's call this art. For the purposes of this conversation, let's call it art. I, as I said, comment below, like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, do consider channel membership. Uh, come back for the next one in between now and then. Do your very best, everybody, and have a good one. We'll see you in the next one. I am going to eat a sandwich of some kind, and then I'm going to finish painting these bodies. I am going to get their mat coats on, and then we will return to business as regular as we can. So we'll see you next time.